I'm going to spend a couple of moments today to talk to you about how we're solving a business problem and transforming an industry with big data. I'm going to give you a demo, a live demo, and, and show you what it looks like, and it's pretty exciting. The, the total um, uh, size of Puget Sound's campus is 145 structures, uh, 1.4 million square meters, 58,000 housed heads. So we are a small size city. We have multiple um, uh, building systems, and that's really a consequence of a phenomenal amount of construction that occurred within the Microsoft campus. Um, and we had contractors building buildings as quick as we could, and they would go to the manufacturers of the systems, and, and there was a speed to delivery. And the real estate team didn't have binder. We didn't have a specification to hand to say, how do we, um, uh, what's our standards, how do we build our buildings? So the general contractors and developers built what they thought best. And when one OEM or manufacturer couldn't meet the deadline, they went to another, another, and another. So you ask me what type of system, what type of building system or de design do we have at Microsoft? I just say yes, we have everything. Every manufacturer you can think of. And, and it's really a challenge to imagine, manage a campus at this size with this much disparity. So that's, that's one of our problems. The other problem is um, from, a, from a power consumption, we're focused on how do we continue to optimize our building, to lower the energy cost, to improve the employee experience. We're a 100 megawatt peak, so the utility feeds a million people, the utility grid that we're on, and we're 3% of it. So we can actually move the needle how we run our buildings. Um, and then we're a 45 uh, million um, euro annual utility spend. We're the third lowest, Washington state is the third lowest energy cost state in the nation. And the most important point on this slide is that we're connected to two million points. This is all the data points that are coming from all these disparate systems across the entire campus. And in a 24 hour period, we collect half a billion data transactions and historically have not done anything with this mass amount of data. And, th and that's what we're trying to solve. We said, how can you use IT to solve this issue? And it's not a Microsoft issue, it's an industry issue. It's a construction industry. Construction, buildings have been built the same way for the last 30 or 50 years. Everything's built in a silo. So air conditioning, um, electrical, power monitoring, elevators. Everybody has their own application, own system, and, and it's just how the industry is. So, so our vision is to take all these disparate systems and put them on one platform. To use the Microsoft as a platform and use IT to drive this. So we had two options to get there. We can rip and replace and, and take all these disparate systems with one system and that would have been 60 million US dollars. I would have had to have buildings shut downs, lab shutdowns. I would have upset everyone. The other option we had is to use IT to extract data from all these disparate systems onto a common platform. And that's what we did. So this is a view of the architecture. And Microsoft, we're using our partners to build on our technology to deliver these solutions. And if you look at the platform or the architecture, you have all the building systems. So multiple building systems across our portfolio. We get control panels. Sometimes we have to go down the energy meter. We pull in enterprise warehouse data. So building square footage, um, head count. Uh, we pull in weather data. We pull in utility. And the, the smart building solution is our partner solution that's driving the value for us. And then what do we do with that data is, is really how we, we use it to um, drive the, the value, drive savings in ways we never could before. So before I go into the demonstration, I want to show you my pain. This is one of our multiple building management systems that runs our campus. The colors up there, this is the before. The colors up there mean absolutely nothing. Can you tell me which building is in distress? How much energy am I using? Which building's performing the best? It's really just a, a dumb 2D drawing. It really provides very little value. And if you think about it, you need 22 screens to see our entire campus. That's not very effective. It's not a good use of labor. So let me show you today.
So this is one of our executive dashboards. This is taking all the existing data from all these disparate systems onto one view, on one glass. So I have, what are the top performing buildings? The arrow goes up or down each week depending on how the building's performing. This is, we're at 30 megawatts, and this is live data from Red Room right now. The orange is um, energy, the blue is weather. So I can look to see how did we start the campus yesterday? And we can get insight to that. I can go back in time, I can port this data out. It's at our fingertips now. If you see the circle here, that's our load segmentation. Base load, plug load, lab load. So base loads, core and shell, the buildings, how long we run the buildings. Um, plug loads, people. And then lab is the power for the uh, labs we have within our campus. And this pie, at the end of every fiscal year, we would spend eight weeks, eight weeks, pulling manual reports and going through data to tell our executives where all the energy went. Now it's real time, live. Tell them in a moment's notice. And I can go into every segmentation and I can tell you what are the drivers of this segmentation. So you wanna know when the people of Microsoft showed up to work yesterday? I can come in here, we can look at when the, the people were coming in. I can look at, not only at a, um, looking at it from the segmentation, I can go into any building across our campus. And I'll pick on City Center. City Center is the largest building in our portfolio, 560,000 square feet. So the three boxes on the left are static, the three on the right are dynamic. So I can see how we started the building that we went yesterday from um, 1.6, megawatts up to 2.5. And what we found in the buildings when we had this data is we found that we were starting the buildings the same time that we were starting, um, the people were showing up to work, the same time the lab. So all this convergence, all this, this power was spike in the building. We didn't have any insight. So we, we can see how the building's performing, we can uh, manage the energy in ways we couldn't before. But that's not the cool part. Let me show you the cool part. So this is our, um, we call it a Redmond Operations Dashboard. So what are the top performing buildings? What are the buildings with the most opportunity? Faults, faults are invisible. They're errors, they're either equipment not running as designed or someone's made a set point. And I can go across the entire campus and let's, uh, let's look at West Campus, let's go to Studios and if you see the pins, the pins here align to, so does the building have a utility? Are the backup generators running? Do we have communications to buildings? Are there faults and alarms? There was a windstorm last night in Seattle, very, very large windstorm. And I was able to, in my hotel room, look across the entire campus in about 60 seconds to see the condition of the campus. Before, we roll trucks. Everybody grab a building, go as quick as you can. Now it's visually. And we can drill down to every building. And so I can look at the floor. And these would be invisible for us before. And I can tell you any equipment that's not running as designed, so anything that turns red has an air to it. It's wasting energy. And it would be invisible to us before. So here we have this unit, this terminal unit, came on at six o'clock last night. Came on after hours. And it's costing us $169 a year in wasted energy. Well, that doesn't sound like much, but we have 20,000 of these units across campus. And, and I would never have the ability to um, see this. So I can look at a building level. I can see what's wasting energy in real time. I can look at a campus level. So here's priority. Priority one is critical. Priority five is my office. Still wasting energy, but not. So I can prioritize by the space type. So we can go to Studio C and say, what, what is wasting money? It's not critical to business, but what's wasting money? Then I can look at priority two. These are much more critical. This could have business impact. And I can see across a building, across a portfolio, how much we're wasting. And we can prioritize our work by business risk as well as cost. So if I want to look at the campus, you see, scroll over, I don't think you can see it. 
there are 262 pages of opportunity for us. It's waiting for us. Save energy. And these, these opportunities, I can organize them by type. So we can look. And this is what I'm casting. Think of it this way. I'm using IT, using the Microsoft platform to cast a net across a city to tell me everything that's wasting energy, anything that's a business risk. And I can dive in, and these are the different risks we're looking for. So where energy is wasting, a damper is lets the fresh air in. This lets air in from the outside that allows us to be much more efficient in our buildings. The building management system says, oh, it's working great. But we can run analytics across our big data and be able to detect, no, it's not running well. In fact, it's wasting money, and we can tell with the analytics how much it's wasting. This, in the facility management world, is a game changer. This is a transformation. We used to sit around and wait for the phone call, wait for someone to call and say, hey, I'm hot, I'm cold. Um, now, we can preactively know what's wrong with our buildings, where energy is being wasted. If you think about reporting, we had very minimal, all reporting was done by hand. Our energy reporting, our business reporting, not, not, not the case any longer. We have capabilities to create any reports. And I'll just pull one up that I um, ran this morning. This is one of my favorite reports. This is the top 500 faults for a given day. So this is yesterday. What are the top 500 things yesterday? So when did it occur? You notice some of them occurred when nobody's there. So when did it occur? What's the asset? What's the priority? So priority five is my office, low risk. Priority two have critical. And how much is it costing me? We run this once a week and we attack all these. Again, this is a game changer. This is what's driving our energy down. So we can change back to the slides now. So, so what does all this mean? What does this use of a technology against this big data problem? Leveraging Tai T. Well, for us, it's replacing our retro commissioning. We used to tune or commission each building once every five years. We'd save about $250,000 in energy and get to maybe 200 assets each year. Now that I have the data, we've transformed this. Now I can commission 30,000 pieces of equipment in one year. Save a million dollars just in how we tune the building. The payback, less than 18 months. And we're in the third lowest energy cost state in the US. So, so if you're paying more than we're paying, I bet you this payback would be less. And, and here is what it looked like before. So the blue is before where we come in, we tune a building, and then we walk away for five years. We do our maintenance and pre uh, preventive maintenance, um, but we don't go deep in the building. And then five years later, we come back and we snap the building up. Then wait another five years and snap the building up. Not very effective. But today, because we have all that data on a common platform, once we connect a building, it will never degrade. We're catching these errors and anomalies the moment they happen. And we can prioritize it. And, and this is a new way of thinking about facility. This is new capabilities that just did not exist before. It makes the invisible visible. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much and appreciate your time. Thank you, Daryl. I want to take just a couple of minutes to ask you a, 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 just a couple of questions about this, because this is an extraordinary system. And I want to know a little bit about how you built it. Was this built based on existing technologies? How much did you have to invent? Where did this come from? So this was completely a software play. We used no hardware, and we leveraged partners to build on Microsoft technology. So this data has already been there. It's always been there. We just didn't have a way to use it. So we leverage our partners to actually create solutions for us, and that's how we achieve these successes. So these are partners who are already creating uh, right. uh, things on Microsoft platforms, and are there particular platforms that you uh, used uh, from Microsoft? So it's, it's SQL, it's Bing Maps, Windows Server, uh, SharePoint, so it's the whole suite of services that are enabling us on Azure, this. Azure, I think, was part of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The cloud is definitely uh, a focus not only for Microsoft, 
it's fixing business problems and driving value for us. So is this a business opportunity for Microsoft to go out, go out and help others other, you know, with their real estate portfolios in the same way? Absolutely. The customers I've talked to are excited. They want to know more. How do they take advantage of this opportunity? And we're at a market transition right now. This is a, this is a uh, I, I'm thinking in six, 12 months or the next Converge conference, you're going to see a lot more adoption, a lot more focus on big data, uh, driving value in real estate. What was involved with personnel training? How much did you have to take the existing maintenance personnel along a new journey? So for me, it was great because my team was pushing us as much as I was trying to, to drive this. They wanted the data. They knew they were missing opportunities. The deployment team was five people. Um, for the pilot, we ran a pilot for one year with multiple vendors. The deployment, six people. So if we can deploy in 15 million square feet or 1.4 million square meters with six people, um, it's got to be easy, it's got to be effective, and it's got to be cost effective. And we, we're, I'm roll up to finance. Everything we do is based on ROI. This is absolutely a business proposition that's driving energy and helping reduce our carbon footprint. So you're obviously one of the bigger, I think one of the biggest campuses perhaps in the world. How much can this be applied to smaller buildings? A, a single building with, I don't know, a half million square feet uh, 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 what is it? I don't know in meters, but uh, you know, what what would is there an optimum size where this makes the most sense? The, there is the jumping-off point for every building. Every customer is a little bit different, and the solutions that they need depending on what they're trying to achieve, the energy management, or they want to go deep. Um, I think on the size, you really can do this just just a few buildings. It makes sense. It, the returns there, and the higher cost area, the higher the energy cost, uh, the quicker the return. And finally. Are there certain kinds of buildings uh, you have on campus, 145 or some? Uh, Structures, right. Uh, some of those are pretty new. Some of those have been around for 30 years. Yeah. Uh, some of them are big, some of them are small. Is there a sort of an optimum profile of a building where this kind of a system makes the most sense? I, I'd say no, because we have standard office buildings where we just do administrative work, but we also have labs. We also have, now that we're, we are at devices and services, um, we have different, different types of buildings. And my peers that I talk to, they're in automotive, they're in uh, oil and gas, they're in, in different verticals. It applies across all verticals. And, and if you think about it, buildings consume 40% of the energy around the globe. This is a tremendous opportunity. Thank you.